Welcome to the show today. You're listening to the I Am Real Estate Show with Danielle Johnson and Ray Smith. Sandra's off today. And in is one of our great sponsors. It is John Spur from Inspired Life Mortgage. He is the CEO of the company. How you doing, hey, boss? I'm doing good. I'm actually excited. It's, it's been like three months since I've been on with Ray. I don't know. I, I'm looking <laughs> at you in awe. I, don't, I can't even believe you're actually here. So, uh, I'm, but I'm this, is, this is amazing. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Before we get started, talk a little bit about what's going on with uh, Inspired Life Chiropractics. With Inspired Life Chiropractic, um, we continue to grow. We have a new acupuncture starting in uh, the first week of January, and uh, we're looking at another massage therapist, but uh, the chiropractic side is doing great. They're making changes in people's lives, and uh, the, the soft wave continues to help everybody with their pickleball injuries and golf injuries. Tell me what the lo- soft wave is exactly. It is, it's new techno- newer technology. We have one of the first 500 machines in the U.S. Um, it, originally, it was for professional sports teams. But essentially, it is the same technology that they use to break up kidney stones. They're using it to treat joint pain, muscle pain, so on and so forth. Uh, we have great success with knee and shoulder and elbow uh, pain. Um, and getting people back to doing the things that they love. It's uh, I right now we're treating my elbows, and I've only had three treatments, and they are significantly better than they were last week. And are you guys now um, Inspired Life Group? So yeah, we've had the Inspired Life Group for okay, a year, okay, okay, um, and we're slowly transitioning to Inspired Life Group, and then all of our things will be underneath it massage chiropractic care acupuncture mortgage um working on insurance so on and so forth well let's talk about the inspired life mortgage just want everybody to know a little bit about how big your company is and how, how well it's doing so far so it's great great to hear but in the year mortgage rate recap for the year mortgage rate recap for the year so um first off it's all over the news that rates have dropped yes okay yes. and it just it it i love when this happens because it just makes me grin every time there's a quick drop in rates Um, because the phones start ringing and everybody's ready to do this and do that and then they quickly realize that rates went up a lot (laughs) (laughs) before we had this little bit of a drop (laughs) Um, in in what we're hearing in the media and what we're seeing online you know oh rates went down two percent they didn't go down two percent they went down about a percent that's still that's mass, pretty good. That's really you good. You were talking about half percents for the yeah. last couple of months. Yeah, so dropping a, dropping a percent is good. Uh, but we started out January 2023 at uh, basically six and a quarter. Um, October 26th of this year, rates hit the high of the year at 7.8 was the average for that month. Wow. Uh, I'm going to share a fun fact real quick. Um, Freddie Mac has been tracking mortgage rate history since 1971. Every year, rates hit their highest level in October for that year. And I didn't believe it when I read this, so uh-huh. you, Ray knows what I did. I yeah. went and I looked at the <laughs> yeah. chart from 1971 <laughs> until now. And right. yes. Um, so now I, wanna, I really want to get down to why it does that, and I'll figure it out. But okay. every, every year, rates hit their highest in October. So, and that happened again in 2023, 7.8. Today, we can get 7 and an eighth which is basically where rates were in July of this year. Okay, okay. So we have continued to go up throughout the year from January 6.2, July 7 and 8th. You know, we went all the way up to 7.8 in October. Now we're back down to 7 and 8th. Uh, we are seeing FHA rates in the high fives. We are seeing conventional rates in the high sixes if you pay an origination point or a discount point. So... Rates are significantly better than they were in October, but they're still higher than they were at the beginning of the year. I don't know if you can explain this. I'm just looking at the numbers. Why is FHA and conventional percentages so different? That's a great question. Yes! (laughs) Yes! Yay! (laughs) Um, FHA... So a conventional loan, you have private mortgage insurance from mortgage insurance companies. Okay. And the the mortgage insurance only insures a particular percentage, over 80%. 
So if you're at 80% loan to value, so if it's a $100,000 home and you have an $80,000 mortgage, that's an 80% loan to value. Right. If you have a $100,000 home and you have a $90,000 mortgage, that's 90% loan to value. The MI company is only going to insure that 10%, the difference between the 80 and the 90. Oh, wow. FHA insures the entire dollar amount borrowed. So an investor is willing to give a lower interest rate on something that they have a better guarantee of getting their money back. Gotcha, gotcha. If the property goes into foreclosure. And so you have a significant difference in rate between conventional and FHA. And that's not a little bit. I mean, I'm looking at the percentages. That's really, you know, figure it's almost a, like it's almost a percentage. So let's put this in perspective. If you purchase the conventional home, 90% loan to value and have mortgage insurance, your mortgage insurance is probably going to be a factor of 0.18 to 0.25. Okay. Okay. And that's, that's just the number we use to calculate how much the mortgage insurance is going to be. FHA's mortgage insurance factor is 0.85 every time. So although that FHA rate is significantly lower, the MI on the FHA loan is significantly higher. And, I, and you don't see that here. <laughs> no, no, you don't see you don't see that there. But there are lots of instances where an FHA loan is still the better product mm-hmm. than a conventional loan. But we have to you know, pull credit, understand your situation, and then compare and look at which product makes the most sense. Um, I might put Joe in an FHA and Sandy in a conventional, but they're buying the same price home with the same down payment. But one of them may have a significantly lower credit score because right. your credit score determines your MI factor. Right. If you have a 620 credit score, you could have an MI factor that's 1.7. Well, now that's twice FHA. Well, we're going to go FHA instead. Okay. Okay. One thing I like to always remind people that you always bring up is that this is not a cookie cutter process. Everybody is an individual. So whatever you have, whatever you hear on this radio station, you hear about this one rate, it depends on you coming and talking to John Spur and understanding him understanding what you have and what your credit is to be able to really tell you what, what you can get out of this. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, Sandra brings it up all the time. She hates the person that came up with the term one size fits all. Because <laughs> it just is not true. It just isn't. Um, and it, and with mortgage lending how much money you're putting down, the type of house you're buying, um, what loan program you're using, credit score that you have. Do you have money in the bank and reserves? Um, wow. are, are you self-employed? Is it a duplex? There's so many factors that go into determining the interest rate. I mean, we've talked about it before and I showed right. you guys at an office meeting, the loan level pricing adjustments. And it's this big grid that just of all these different things. And we have to take all of that into account and it can make your rate go up or go down. So, when you hear an interest rate on the radio or you hear me say a rate or you see a rate online, that's just, that's an average. That's the average rate that loans have closed at for that month. Right. You know, there's going to be ones that close higher. There's going to be ones that close significantly lower. It just depends on each person's unique situation. I love that. Anything you want to add, Danielle? How about I'll wait till after the break? We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> We're You're only going to gonna give me five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for spending part of your afternoon with us. You're listening to the I Am Real Estate Show at 10.30 a.m. The Voice. You're listening to Sandra, I mean, Danielle Johnson and Ray Smith. We're part of the Johnson Smith team, who our designated broker is, I like to say something. There you go. Don Geisler. Hey, Don Geisler Indy Realty. Realty. <laughs> we talk to you after the break. Danielle and Ray on the, on the air with John Spur, who is the CEO of Inspired Life Mortgage. And I think I'm going to give Danielle more than five seconds this time to <laughs> to get a point across, ask some questions. <laughs> Thank you. So we were talking a little bit about how, you know, you hear rates and the actual situation, mm-hmm. your personal credit score, how much your down payment is, the house, all of that changes what you're going to get when you are getting a mortgage. Yet when we go online, of course, there's all these little mortgage calculators where they ask you one or two questions, you type it in and they give you some kind of numbers. Can you talk about, you know, I've, I've had clients that I've talked to that have very different expectations based on those quick little calculators that they've done versus Mm -hmm. what you're able to provide for them when you get to know their situation. Yeah. Don't shop for the largest financial transaction you're ever going to do online. (laughs) (laughs) I I just, I don't, I mean... (laughs) Everybody thinks the house is the most expensive thing that they're going to buy. And what the most expensive thing they're buying is their mortgage. 
because if they make all 360 payments on that mortgage, they're going to pay roughly 50% more on the mortgage than what they paid for the house. So if you bought a $100,000 house and you make all 360 payments, you're paying $150,000 making the mortgage the most expensive thing you'll ever buy. And you know, I just I don't know any other way to put it. Online is great for a lot of things like getting a pair of jeans from Amazon. <laughs> um, or a nutcracker with you. I have, you yeah. know, Putting in what you think your credit score is, which, by the way, the credit score that you get from Credit Karma is not the credit score that I'm going to get when I pull your mortgage credit report. There are two completely different credit scoring models that are used. Um, and these these little systems are, as we all know, made to capture enough in- information that you put your phone number in so that you can now get 100 phone calls from 100 different loan officers. Mm-hmm. And they're all going to give you a different answer because you're going to give them different information to each person you talk to and you're going to confuse yourself. That's essentially what's going to happen. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it, it, it's definitely garbage in, garbage out, and the computer doesn't know the right questions to ask. I have 30 years of knowledge. I know the right questions to ask. Well, and I think that is, you know, it's a really important thing just to, to make a note of mm. because it is a really expensive mistake if you choose to just go with, anything that you find online and uh, you know without knowing your full situation I have talked to different people who were able to get something much better going with you knowing the local programs knowing what's available here versus those online you know one stop shop just click here and we're done kind of a thing well the other part about it that's different is the you know the LO you're going to talk to that's calling you from the call center that got the information from the online computer screen he doesn't own the company I own Inspired Life Mortgage you're right. talking to the owner you're not talking to anybody else I make the decisions in case anybody was warning LO is loan officer <laughs> thank you Raymond <laughs> Ray got a question right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> gold star <laughs> i'm working on it i'm getting better and better it's only been like just like our 80th show and i'm only i'm just getting it right now <laughs> it's taking a while with that being said I, I i i think daniel question was great and my my thing was what they don't know is that once they call you what do they need to have this pre-proved and and uh pre-qual yeah so pre-qualified or pre-approved yes are two completely different things um in the state of Arizona, you need an Arizona pre-qualification form, right, to write an offer. That form only requires us to look at a pay stub, look at a W-2, look at a bank statement, and pull credit, and run general numbers, and say, yeah, I think they can buy this house. Pre-approval, we get all of your information, we put it in front of an underwriter, we have the underwriter underwrite the loan and approve the loan. So there's a significant difference between a loan officer, LO, who <laughs> has looked at some documentation and thinks you qualify versus taking all the documentation and putting it in front of the decision maker, the you know, the mortgage underwriter and having them underwrite and approve the loan. How long would it take to get a pre pre qual and how long does it take to get pre approved? Uh, a pre qual I can do in about five minutes. A pre approval, if the automated underwriting system approves you, I can do it in thirty minutes. So we would rather do the thirty minute one and have the pre qualification with all those. That Absolutely, okay. and if I, if we can't get automated approval, then we need about a week to put it in front of a human. Okay, and with that being said, what kind of information do you need from the when you're talking to a about pre qual? They just could tell you everything over the phone right there. I, I make this much money. This is what I'm doing. This is the house I'm trying to buy. Or well, pre approval. They need to give you some data you can that you can actually look at. Am I correct? Or is it, or is it the same information? Yeah, no. If we're going to go for the pre-approval, I need to see you know their la- most recent pay stub, last mm-hmm. year's W two. Um, we need to have two months bank statements to prove that they have the money for down payment and closing costs. Mm-hmm. Pull a full credit report, not a a. Um, now I lost my train of thought. Anyways, there's two credit reports. We can pull one that's full and one that isn't. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and then name a date of birth, social security number, so on and so forth. Um, it's. I I would prefer to just take the entire application and do the pre-approval from the get-go. Right. um, Instead of doing the pre-qual and then going from there. I would rather just have it all done. If you think about it from the seller's perspective, too, if they're looking at two offers and they've got those offers in front of them and you have someone who's already pre-approved, you know that there's a really good chance that this loan is going to go through versus someone who's pre 
qualified, they should have it go through. I mean, that's the reason we do it, right? Because we want to make sure that someone is qualified to buy. But it just gives that little extra security, I guess, for the sellers, too, to see that you are going so far through this process. It wasn't just a, a real quick thing. Absolutely. And you, you've gotten, you've received PQFs, you know, the qualification forms and the approval forms for me. And, you know, the approval is an actual letter. And if it's a particular property, it has mm-hmm. the address on it that we've approved them for that address, so on and so forth. Um, and rates are going to continue to drop. I, I truly believe that we're n- working towards that downward. And if that's the case, with the limited inventory we have, we're going to be back into a you know a competitive market yes. this summer. And <clears throat> your offer getting accepted could come down simply to you have a pre-approval versus everybody else having a pre-approval. I remember that time because you know because of the before right after the COVID, they, were one, they wouldn't even look at a pre-qual. And say, so might well take the time, we'll get it pre-approved. We want something that's, that's, that's substantial and knowing that before we say yes on this offer and we have these other offers that are similar, we're going to go with the one that's, that's pre-approved, not with pre-qual. We know it's, that person's been done. It's a really good way to be serious about the process yourself uh-huh. to make sure that you are doing what you need to and you're not going to flake out later, you know, getting a good head start. But it also does show that seriousness to the sellers. And so it's, I mean, it's a really good opportunity for you to to put yourself one step ahead i over the years have had many borrowers end up coming to me where they had done a pre-qual with another lender in town and they went put an offer in the house they got two-thirds of the way through the process and then they were declined yeah and i see that happen time and time again and then they end up with me and i said look we're not sending you shopping until we have you fully approved Mm -hmm. and that's for me, the real big reason I want to have people fully approved is I don't like setting people up for failure. That's right. the last thing that I want to do is set somebody up for failure or give them high hopes that they can go buy X house and they can only qualify for Y house when we finally get an offer. That's a really hard thing, too. If you have that pre-qualification, you think that you're going to get this house and then, you know, you get three quarters of the way through the process and you can't get it. And there's nothing you can do in a lot of cases. Uh, a, pre- a prequal is just somebody's opinion based on their level of education in the industry that they believe you're going to qualify. That's all it is. How long is a pre-approval good for? Credit reports are good for 120 days, so I make pre-approvals good for 90 because it could take 30 days to close and then I have to pull a new credit report. We're heading to the break. You're listening to the I Am Real Estate Show. We have John Spur, who is the owner of Inspired Life Mortgage here, a local company in Tucson. Thanks for staying with us. We're here to discuss a little bit more topics, interested, a little bit more interesting topics in real estate. The I Am Real Estate Show with Ray and Danielle. Sandra is off today. We are here with John Spur of Inspired Life Mortgage. He is the CEO of the company. And go ahead, <laughs> Danielle. So, John, you mentioned something earlier I want to jump back to. You said that the house itself is not the most expensive purchase. And a lot of times we think of it as the most expensive thing, but actually the mortgage is. Whatever you're paying in this interest rate, if you're paying a 30-year mortgage, you gave the example of a $100,000 house paying back 150000 Correct. So can we talk just a little bit about that in general, a 30-year versus a 20-year versus a 15 or if you're trying to make some extra payments, when to do that, how to do that? Absolutely. So the, the first thing I'm going to talk about is mortgage terms, which is the number of years you're paying back. Most people are familiar with, you know, a 30, a 20, a 15. Those are the most common ones that we hear of. And a lot of lenders, that's all they can offer. Mm-hmm. Um, I can offer anything between 10 and 30. So just as an example, you're getting ready to buy a home and you want to retire in 17 years. We could do a 17-year mortgage. That way we know it's going to be paid off when you go to retire. Um, now, you had mentioned that, you know, on a 30-year, you're going to pay about one and a half times the sales mm-hmm. price of the house. Now, on a 20-year, that's going to be about one and a third. And if you did a 10-year, you're going to be around one and a quarter to, you know, maybe 20% more. Um, and it's because you're paying that principal balance down faster. Um, you had mentioned, is it better to, or was it pay more to principal at the beginning or the end? Was right. That, was that what the yes. question was? Well, sometimes when you get into the house, you know, you're just trying to make your payments. You're getting used to it. But I had heard when I had bought my first house, make sure you try to make one extra payment a year to try to get that principal down quickly. And that in the first five years, that that is more beneficial to you because your principal is higher. Yeah. And, and it's because the interest is front loaded on a mortgage. When I, when I say that, the, the, 
when you make your very first mortgage payment, you're going to see like ninety dollars go to principal and everything else went to interest. And it and it as you go throughout through the process and you get further down the line, more and more and more goes to the principal balance. But if you're chopping away at that principal balance on the front end, that gets you to the end point quicker than if you wait five or six years to start making extra payments. That well, and if, you, if you've just gotten yourself into a house, you know, it's hard to think about trying to make an extra payment. A lot of times you're trying to get settled in, but that is the time where it's most important to try to make that extra payment if you can so that more of it does go to principal and you can get... I actually had looked at some numbers where based on making a few extra payments in the first few years, a 30-year mortgage is able to be paid off if you continue making your regular payment plus the extras in fewer years. So you could get that 30 down to 20 years. Yeah, and I don't know if it would make it to 20. I haven't looked at the numbers in a while, but you by making one extra payment a year, you can significantly shorten the length of that mortgage. I One thing I want to mention, because we are going to be going into lower interest rates over the next couple of years, mm -hmm. the thing I see people make, the biggest mistake I see anybody make, especially a, a first-time home buyer, first homeowner, is they go they refinance. And the refinance isn't the issue. They've been paying on the house for three years, and then they refinance into a 30-year. Well, you just took those three years that you've been paying on your house and thrown it away. So as we go into lower interest rates, something I want people to think about is when it does come time for you to refinance, find somebody that can do all the year, all the odd year terms, like a 27-year or 25-year or 26-year. And if you've been paying on your mortgage for four years, do a refinance to a 26-year. Don't throw away the last four years that you've been paying on your mortgage. Right. Uh, good point. <clears throat> One last thing you said that you make sure that when you are making an early payment that you make sure that it goes towards principal. You have to ask them about principal. Yeah, so when you... The, the bank doesn't know what you want to do with the extra money. Um, and they actually have what they call a suspense account. And so let's say your mortgage payment is $1,400 a month and you send in 1600 but you don't tell them what to do with the other 200 They put it in this little account and it sits there. And once that little account reaches 1600 bucks, they just make another payment for you. So when you pay extra, if you're doing it online, it's going to say, I want 200 to go to principal or I want 200 to go to this or that. You have to tell them what you want done with that extra money or extra payment or they're going to just apply it as a payment and you're just going to be paid ahead on your mortgage. I think an important thing too to to mention in that is that if you're doing it on their payment site, then there's an option to add that to principal. If you're sending a check from your bank, from your bank account, you're just sending an amount of money and it, it doesn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And if you're sending that little extra, like you're saying, it's just going to sit there. If you make a full extra payment, then it pays that month ahead. It doesn't go to principal unless you spe you specify, which is hard to do from your bank. So it's better to go to their site. And, and something else I want to mention is because we do everything online with our mortgages and everything else now, right? We don't open mail. If you get an envelope that has your mortgage company's name on it, open it. I have an individual right now that was not opening their mail, and she had her payment on auto pay and she thought she was paying more because she'd set it up for $200 more than what the amount was. Well, in the last two years, her insurance and taxes have gone up more than her extra, and now she has a bunch of late payments because she wasn't opening her mail, and she thought she was making her mortgage payment on time, and the amount wasn't enough. And if the amount of your payment isn't enough to cover the payment, they will not apply it. They will they will mark it as you did not make your payment on time. Regardless of how, how close you were to the Wow. Because it, so her payment went up to sixteen fifty, I think, and she was paying sixteen hundred. And in her mind, the money came out of the checking account. She made her mortgage payment. They're not applying it because it's fifty dollars short, and now she has a bunch of mortgage late. And they were the way they respond, the way they communicate with you is through mail, because that's what they're required to do. They have to show that they sent mail to you. Okay. And she was getting letters from the mortgage company, throwing them in the trash, thinking it was advertisement. So if you get something that has your mortgage company's name on the envelope, open it. Well, and that change in insurance and taxes, that can be a frequent change annually, if not sometimes twice a year. For the last three years, I promise you, everybody's taxes and insurance has gone up every year, which makes your mortgage payment go up because it well, could if you're, it's part of your payment. So, but yes, if you're getting letters from your mortgage company, open them. Do not throw them in the trash. One thing I was thinking about is that you doesn't matter how much you pay over and ask for them to put it towards principal. Let's say I'm paying 200 more and I tell, 
Hey, every time put that choice principle. Is that a big deal or is that not a big deal? There's no restriction. You can pay as much extra to principal or little as you want. Let's say, you know, somebody passes away and they leave you thirty thousand dollars. You can take that thirty thousand and apply it to principal. But there's no limit. One more thing I'm gonna note on opening something from your mortgage company. I had my mortgage sold to another company and when I started getting the second company, you know, had I not opened something from my mortgage company saying that your loan has been sold, this is what to expect. Yeah. I would have thought that was advertisement, but it was actually my new payment had to go to the new company. Exactly. You're listening to the I Am Real Estate Show with Ray and Danielle. We are here to, we are here to maybe help you enter into the market and buy a home or sell a home with your John, with the Johnson Smith team. We'll be back with John Spur of Inspire Life Mortgage, who is the local company here in Tucson, who we love to work with, and we hope that you will too, so give him a call. Hi, everyone. We're back with John Spur, the owner of Inspire Life Mortgage and part owner of Inspire Life Chiropractic here in Tucson. Both those companies are in Tucson. One thing I want to talk about was the, I didn't see us mention anything about USDA. Anything you want to say about USDA loans? I mean, it's a great product if you can find a home in the USDA area. Mm -hmm. It is the people that certify our beef also uh, do mortgage loans. Uh, requires no down payment. Uh, but it is going to be in the outlying areas, like down in the Green Valley, Sarita area, out past Marana. Red uh, Rock. You know, Red Rock area, possibly. There's going to be some pockets. But it's, you know, you really have to make sure. If, if, if you want to go the route of USDA with no money down, we have to look and say, okay, these are the pockets you can do this in because you're not going to go buy a house at Speedway and Kolb on a USDA loan. It's not going to happen. Does USDA have PMI? It, uh, it has a form of it. But, okay. it, I mean, it's it's built in. Okay. Is Vail USDA? I think Corona de Tucson is, but is Vail? Vail is not. Vail is not. No. They redid the USDA boundaries about 15 years ago because you used to be able to buy USDA and Rita Ranch and yeah. in Miranda and whatnot, and they finally caught on to that, <laughs> and they redid the boundaries, <laughs> and they pushed it way out. That's funny because it, is, is it in Red Rock now or is it close to Red Rock? There's parts in Red Rock, but where all that development is yes. in Red Rock, they drew a circle around it. So where the, you know you can't, <laughs> yeah. Well, so if you're interested in it, definitely ask John before you go look at <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a it's an easy conversation. I have a, a, a on my computer at the office. I can bring up USDA site and I can send you a map and say, okay, as long as you're not in the purple area, you're good to go. So we just go look for homes, and they, they would call us, and we would go find them homes and then in that area, and hoping they'd get a USDA loan. Yeah, definitely. After you get the map, call, call us. us. Yeah. <laughs> Raymond, what's your phone number? 520-904-7711. How about you, Danielle? What's your phone number? 520-373-6864. Please give me your mom's number. My mom's number is 520-850-1725. That's and right. just in case you don't know, Sandra is my mom. So that is Sandra's number. <laughs> and I cannot tell you how happy I am that we finally got to say your mom on this radio show. I have been waiting for that for the longest time. Hey, we're Pe people that don't know me, I love mom jokes. And that was, that's the best thing that's ever happened. We got to say your mom on yeah. the air. It was great. When I was in college, a good friend of mine, we used to always do the your mom, you know, whatever. And then the response would be my mom. So I definitely had that <laughs> in my our, head as our, I'm saying. Uh, my mom's number. The Wi-Fi network at our house is labeled like your mom. The <laughs> 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 reason why I bring that up is to let everybody know that we're a team and we're a family team member and we all bring the family. We bring about what we believe in, in in real estate, about being the family. And so that's why we have Inspired Life Mortgage and Don Spur. John Spur. I'm going to say Don Spur. <laughs> John Spur is uh, our mortgage handler when we believe in and trust. So it's all a family organization trying to do our best to do what's best for the people out there. Wouldn't you say, Danielle? Yeah, I think it's important to know about our team and the people that we work with because we are not, you know, being a family team, we're really focused on helping each other and working together. And it's not, you know, it's not the same when you see these really big teams where the they may not know each other really well. They view each other as competition. We are a team who works together. So if you work with one of us, you work with the entire team. If, you know, if we can, we show up together. A couple of us might show up, if not all three. And it's really an opportunity to have multiple people who can advocate for you, whether you're buying yes. or selling. Yes. And who, you know, if one of us is ever busy, you don't have to worry about it because you can reach the others. 
What's the oh thank you, Danielle. That was very well said, Danielle Johnson. <laughs> I said applaud. Yay, Danielle. John, what about the VA loan and how well are you averse in VA loans? I just want to hear everybody hear what you have to say. <laughs> that's, that's my primary source of business. I love VA loans and I've been doing them for a very long time. Um, any loan officer can do a VA loan if their company pays 100 bucks to the VA to renew their little VA license. There's right. no testing, everything goes behind it. I'm a VA certified lender. I go through a lot every year to keep that certification. It also allows me to have extra access to uh, the VA network so I can do a lot of the legwork for you as a mm-hmm. veteran so you don't have to go find your COE or you don't have to go to this to do that. I have access to the entire system. Um, but I half of my business every year are VA loans and I love working on them. Uh, DD, DD-214s and all that stuff? No, no I, don't even, I, I, I will never ask you for a DD-214. You won't have to go find it. I'll never ask it because of the access that I have and because nice. of what I do to stay in the good graces of the VA every year. Everybody who's a VA, you need to give them a call. I've been looking for mine for a while. So <laughs> <laughs> I hate to call. I hate to call John. See if you can see me help me out there. That's good to know. But my thing about that was DD two fourteen. They're always trying to find it. Everybody said I can't find it. You have to go to get it from the government. You have to go submit it if you don't have one. And so what is we, the what we, is the limit now on <clears throat> VAs? Uh, there is no limit. Wow. When I was, like, was that? I mean, you you, you want to go buy a two million dollar home? Go buy a two million dollar home. With no money down. And call us to be that's, your realtors. We'll help you find that's it. Exactly. <laughs> With no money down and no PMI. Am I correct? No PMI. Maybe a funding fee. If you're receiving disability pay, there should be no funding fee, but there is no PMI or MI. Is there a percentage of disability? Do you know? Yeah, people say 10%. I've got a good relationship with uh, the people up in Phoenix. And if, if you're receiving disability, there's a, a, a high probability that we're going to be able to get your funding fee waived. And that's mainly due toward the closing, the closing costs, right? The funding fee is a fee that the VA charges that goes into a pool so that if somebody defaults, they use the money in that pool to pay the investor back on the loan. Mm-hmm. Um, and the funding fee varies depending on... How many times have you used your VA eligibility? Um, are you putting money down or not? Mm-hmm. So on and so forth. I want to circle back. At the beginning, we talked about the rates for the year. Mm-hmm. If someone was sitting here January 2023 at the average being about a 6.25%, if they sat there and said, you know what, I'm just going to wait a little bit and then watched the rates go throughout the year and they're still sitting here and haven't bought yet, what is the cost of waiting this entire year and now being looking now looking at buying in the the new year i mean it's a great question i say it all the time there's a cost of waiting so um i think we all agree that properties in tucson appreciated about three and a half percent this year Mm -hmm. right it's a fair number so if you were purchasing a three hundred thousand dollar if you didn't purchase a three hundred thousand dollar home at the beginning of the year that home is now worth three hundred and ten thousand five hundred bucks so Number one, you lost out on $10,500 in appreciation by waiting. Um, rates went up. If you had bought at the beginning of the year, you would have been around six and a quarter. And today you'd be at seven and an eighth. So not purchasing that same $300,000 home that's now worth $310,500, it's a higher rate. Your payment's $196 a month more for that same house in December than it would have been in January. And this is not going to change. Home values are going to continue to increase. So even if rates come trickle down, I've done this math. If you want to have the same payment at six and a quarter on a $300,000 home, and the house is now 310500 you have to have a rate of 5.75. Home values are going to go up faster than rates are going to come down. Mm-hmm. And you're not, every year you wait, that payment's just going to go up, even if rates come down. Well, and if they've been renting this entire year, all of that money that they're, went to rent they're 18, is a loss. They're eighteen hundred dollars a month. They should have just thrown it in a metal barrel and set it on fire because that's what they did. They, they they paid somebody else to put a roof over their head instead of pay down their principal balance and gain the equity in the property. That's a huge cost. I mean, thinking about that, <clears throat> let's say eighteen hundred a month. I mean, that, that's a lot right there. And if that had gone in, you could be looking at, you know, how much money you paid out it's, for. I, I've, I've played with the math a lot. And just just for 2023, you know, if, if you didn't buy in January because you wanted to time the market, um, 
on, a, on an average $300,000 home, you lost out on somewhere between $15,000 to $17,000 because of interest rate, appreciation, and the fact that you weren't applying money to your principal balance. You were just paying rent. Yeah, and the thing about that is, what do we say now? 2024 is coming out January. In January, it was only a couple of weeks away. And the rate is at six point something. I don't, I'm not even look at the number. So let's think about that. But if the rate changes to five something six months now, six months from now, and you already have a home, you're in a much better condition you, uh, situation you are by you know, trying to wait till summer, hoping that it get, it goes down. Well, look, look, look at 2020. Everybody got these great low rates, right? They got two and a half percent, but everybody overpaid for the house. Every single person that bought a house in 2020 paid more than what it was worth in 2020. Now it's probably worth it today, but they had to wait three years to get there. But they got this great low rate. You know, it, it's there. It's Plus always, the minus and everything, yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to what people ask me is a good time to buy a house. If you can afford the payment, it's always a good time to buy the house. I don't care what the interest rate is. It is always a good time to buy a house if you can afford the monthly payment because you're investing in yourself. You're not investing in your landlord, and it's that simple. Th- as soon as you own a home, you're investing in yourself. I think people worry about all the other things that come with it, like having to pay all the other bills, but... That's the whole idea of having you there to sit back and go through their finances and saying, here's what you have to pay, here's what the utilities may be, here's what you're going to have to, here's what you take home play, pay is. You should be, yes, you can, or you need to work on it. Or, like you said, you'll get them through a process and help them. I have been sitting here waiting for you to say, date the rate, marry I know. the house. And I know. You I haven't, haven't said, said it, it yet. I know. And I say, <laughs> it, I say it all the time. You're just waiting for me to say it. But yes, I mean, you know, it, it's it, it's one of my favorite things. You're dating the rate and you're marrying the house. And what I mean by that is you're finding the house that's going to suit your needs for the next five to 10 years. And so you're going to marry that house. When rates drop, you refinance. And when rates drop again, you refinance. But we do the refinance with a purpose. We make sure that we're not going backwards. If you've been paying on the mortgage for three years, you do 20 ser- 27 year refi. There's ways to do this smartly and still reduce your monthly payment. You sound so smart. How do people get a hold of you? I uh, think the best way to get a hold of me is on my cell phone at 520 247 3610. And I'm just going to jump in here and say if you would like a free home valuation, it's a really good time to get that so that going into the new year as you're doing your financial planning, you know what your home is worth, which is, for most of us, the biggest asset that we have. And we'd like to thank John Spur for being on the show. John Spur is the owner of Inspired Life Mortgage. He's the best in the world. And we'd like to thank our other amazing sponsors, which is Pioneer Title Agency. We have Indy Realty, Rego Pest Prevention, and Power Solar. When you use one of our sponsors, let them know that the Johnson Smith team at Indy Realty are the people that got a hold of you. Thanks, John, for spending some time with us today. Happy holidays, buddy. Have a good one. Thank you.